Good day, folks. Welcome back to My Neck of the Woods. My name is Dika, where I share my experience and my knowledge, hoping to lessen your learning curve. So today I have a dual product review or a comparison or a versus or have, however you want to put it. Uh, it is the Spy Point Flex here, which that's the problem. Spy Point Flex versus the Molt Re-Edge, all right? So before I get started, please sub the channel, like my videos, and make some comments. You know that I like the comments. I very much like the comments. So what I'm going to do, how I'm going to approach this is I am going to go through the specifications, side-by-side -side comparison, as well as giving my overall opinion of how they operate and whether those comparisons are valid. And then at the end, I'm going to give my overall opinion of some of the other things that I have experienced with, the, with both of these cameras. All right, so side-by-side -side comparison. I, what I'm doing is basically comparing um, specifications that are on the website or on the manual. I understand that you can do this on your own, but I think it's a good comparison of my overall experience and whether I think that those specifications are valid. All right, so first off, the price. Right, so the price of this, the the MSRP of this is one forty nine ninety nine. The MSRP of this is a hundred dollars. So right off the bat, you're saving a hundred dollars. Excuse me, fifty dollars with this camera. But it never sells for one fifty. It's always on the website for one hundred nine ninety nine. Always. This is always this is always a hundred dollars across the board. There's no. Uh, I haven't, it's relatively new, so I haven't really found any sales or, or, or for the most part on this. Except you can buy a two pack of this for $180. So you save yourself, what, $20 total or whatnot. So this is always retailed on the website and usually on Amazon or eBay or wherever you're going to buy this for $109.99, $110. But they do run sales on it too, upwards of $90. So right now, I think on the website you can get this for $90, but that changes. It changes seasonally, or I'm, I'm not sure really when SpyPoint chooses to offer their sales, okay? So this, as far as the picture and the resolution, is 1080p and 33 megapixels. This is 72p and 33 megapixels megapixels. So the, the resolution is the same, but the quality of the video is different. And I agree with that. Um, 720p for a trail camera is pretty damn good. But when you get the photos and the videos on this, they are crisp and they are clear and they are absolutely beautiful. This, on the other hand, they're still great and the videos are superb quality at 70, 72p. But comparing them side by side, this has a, a, a better a better picture. All right. Now they both do photo and video with sound, photo and video with sound. But as far as the photo, photo and video, um, you can only do photo or video. You can't do both. And it's, in my opinion, it's kind of problematic. So when, when you do, so this one, uh, you can do photo and video, what you, and what you do is you put it on a photo and video option. So a photo comes up, and you want that to be a video, you request a video on it, and the next transmission, you have a video for that picture. This is either photo or video. There's no option in between. And here's why I see that, see that it's problematic. So when you go, and say you put this on video, right? So you go a video, it's going to take... Uh, it's going to be a three-second video, a little bit from the front, a little bit from the middle, and a little bit from the end. It's usually a 15-second video. I think you can do 30-second videos on this. But either way, you're going to get this little, like, stop animation picture. You're going to see it move, but you, you can't really tell exactly what's going on for the most part. And then you can request an HD video off of that. But it, it taps into your plan. So you're going to, you, you have to, you're going to pay for photos and you're going to pay for videos, depending on how you set this. And unless you're just paying for videos, that's fine. It's going to charge you for three pictures, for those three separate pictures that they're putting in, in your sort of stop animation video, and then it's going to charge you for the video also, just so you know. I think that's a little suspicious, but that's just my, my opinion, my review, my opinion. So you can either get video or you can either get photo. You can't get both. So when you get your video, right, and you want to like blow it up or look at it or you look at something in the back or you want to look at an antler or or a piece of a turkey or whatever, you can't do that with the video option. You can do that with the photo option, but you can't do it with the video. 
This, on the other hand, you just put it on, uh, you can put it on photo or video, but you can put it on photo and video, and you have that option. So a photo comes in and you want to look through it and maybe you see, I don't know, maybe another deer moving in the background or something else in the background and you want to request that video to get a little, little more recon, a little more information, you request the video and then on the next transmission, it could be in 10 seconds or it could be in three hours, you're going to get that video. So whenever it, whenever it clicks another transmission for the most part. Um, you can do a test on this. So, but you cannot do a test on this. You can do a test on this in the field. So say you set this up, say you set this up, right? And uh, you do your test just to make sure that the camera's working. You hit test, it takes a picture, and then you're on your way and then you leave your camera. With this one, and this is new to Moultrie, you can do a test. So this takes a picture every day at the same time, just to make sure your camera's out there and your camera is functional. That's a, I like that because sometimes you don't know whether the camera's still working or the batteries or someone tampered with it or someone stole it or, or whatever. I like that and I use that option a lot with this one. All right, so that's really all I have to say about the photo and the video with sound. All right, now the SD cards. This has two SD cards. Uh, one is in here and it's uh, you, you can't remove it. It's... Um, situated in the bottom here, kind of underneath the sticker that says do not remove for the most part. And you have another SD card, your micro SD card, which for the most part, that's what SpyPoint uses. You have the two SD cards. One is internal, holds memory. And I, I think it's basically used for a lot of the remote things that we have to do with this, this uh, new generation of cameras where there's no, uh, there's no carrier. All right, and then you have the SD card. The micro SD card has to be class 10 for spy point and then that's what that has. As far as this, there's no SD card. It's done away with it. Everything is internal and everything that's gonna be uploaded, um, you don't even know about it. You're not even aware of it and it just, and in fact, they've simplified everything in here. All you do is turn it on. You turn it on and it works for the most part, which is great. All right, so the trigger speed. Trigger speed, and this one is faster. It's much faster, but they're both under a second. So for the most part, I don't really notice it. They're both going to catch a deer running by, and it's, it's relatively going to be a clear picture. They're going to catch it. This is 0.3. This is 0.85. They're both underneath a second. They're both lightning fast. This is, I think it's the fastest on the market, and I would say that it's fast. But when you're running both your cameras, you don't really notice it. They're both fast. They both work. The flash on this is... 100 feet. The flash on this is 80 feet. Uh, I would say that is true to both of them. Again, I don't really notice it too much. 80 feet and 100 feet away from a camera is pretty far for the most part. And if something is that far away from your camera, maybe you maybe you want to pattern something a little differently. Um, sometimes, right? Um, this has uh, the remote firmware, and this has remote updates also. The only difference in that is this is going to tell you. So when you put a new card in there, or um, you just turn it on. It, if there's new firmware available, if you have a good signal, it's gonna upload that firmware for you uh, automatically. So you don't have to be going back and forth, which is a convenience with SpyPoint now. You don't have to go back and forth with putting that new firmware on the cards. That, ha that in the past has been a troubleshooting problem with SpyPoint. It's always, well, my camera's not working. Let me call customer service or whatnot. And you're on with customer service. And basically what it is, is the camera isn't going to operate unless you have the new firmware, which is, which, which is a false claim with SpyPoint, just to let you know. I've been with SpyPoint for six or seven years now, and I have cameras that are five or six years old, and I just leave them in the woods, and I replace the batteries, and there's no firmware updates. I don't change them with the card, and they still work perfect for the most part so just just so you know that, that as, as a friendly disclaimer from my neck of the woods anyway so uh where was I? i've lost my thought uh, so as far as the firmware updates they, they go straight to the camera and you don't have to worry about that you don't have to bring in new cards or move them around or do anything like that it's good this any type of update you're not even going to be notified it's just going to every time you turn on the camera um 
it, it's just going to upload it, up, upload a, any new firmware that has to be done. Um, there, as far as like, sometimes a camera will be a little finicky, uh, and or maybe it's in the a, a kind of a crappy location or something like that. Move the location, turn it off, turn it on. Maybe it just needs some new firmware, and um, it takes care of it for you. Uh, in fact, that's a troubleshooting thing that I do with Moultrie. Um, I don't know if that really happens because you're not you're not notified. It doesn't tell you that. All right. Um, this has GPS location. This does not. I think it's in the works because yeah, you can kind of see it on the mobile motor uh, application, but it's just not. It's just not current. This is a convenience. So when you put your cameras out, you don't have to put little pins down for your Onyx or uh, the Hunt Stand or whatever application that you're using. Sorry, the sun's coming in here, so I'm kind of being uh, brushed out here. So. Um, uh, yeah, so GPS location, that's a convenience that Spy Point is new, and uh, the, the Flex has taken care of that. All right, as far as batteries, um, people, uh, this is this takes eight double A's, and this takes eight or 16 double A's, and I'm going to explain it to you. So as far as the batteries, they've both updated uh, kind of the, the battery case here. Battery case slides in there, as opposed to kind of having to Kind of like push it in for the most part. I think sometimes when you're changing the batteries out in the field, the, a little bit of moisture gets in there, or maybe the seals fail over time. I think this was designed to get a better connection. It just has the connection there on the top, and it slides right in, and it, it's snug in there, and it closes in. And everything's sealed here for the most part to keep our um, uh, debris and water and everything out. It has changed to the bottom. A lot of the spy points, they open from the top. But if, if, you, if you've had spy point in the past, you know that water gets in there over time. It does. It just corrodes. And they've changed to like how other, people, other manufacturers do it where they do it on the bottom. So if anything's going to run off, it's going to run off and potentially not get in there. Kudos to spy point for changing that. And it takes eight double A's. The batteries on this, again, are in the bottom has a release here and it pops up and pops out it's really snug in there and the batteries you can do 8 or 16 which I like I like very very much it, it so when it burns through eight batteries it's going to start burning through the additional eight batteries that you put in there so it keeps you out of the field keeps your scent out of the field and keeps that ca camera rolling good um, to be honest I I haven't had it once. Uh, on eight batteries, you're going to get two to three good months on an active camera. Now, I use Rayovac batteries. I do not use lithium batteries. I use Rayovac batteries. I find that they work excellent in trail cameras. And if I just put eight in this, it will last, I want to say, it's, it's, I put 16 in this, it's going to last a year, no problem. I have not, I'll put this out in, in the field, and I never have to go and change the batteries within the year. You know, sometimes I usually don't run tra trail cameras a year long, but I have had this, uh, this one for two seasons coming up on the second season now, and I haven't, still haven't changed the batteries and they're just Rayovac double A's. And then this fits snug inside here. I don't know if I'm putting it in. It, it goes in a certain way. Oh, this way. So it, oh, sorry, this way. So it catches the, um, the top there. All right, so I use Rayovac batteries. This, on the other hand, when this gets below 50%, it's just a paperweight and it stops working. This, I can run these down. In fact, I don't know about this yet. So I haven't run them down past 40% and I'll leave them out for a long, long time. So this, uh, it's not this particular camera, but I had one from last year. I turned it on. It was still at 50% and I put it out for tricky season and it's still going strong. No problems whatsoever. This, on the other hand, it just burns through batteries. Now, I think that lithium batteries are the best, but they are the most expensive. And for that, this camera may not be for me because lithiums are so expensive. And this does burn through lithiums quickly also. But this camera, generic batteries, it's just going to rip through them. It just rips through them so much energy. I think Spy Point is losing ground in the cellular camera technology. 
That's my opinion. So as far as batteries, you need lithiums to run this. Um, and so I'll put my Rayovac batteries in here and it will just stop working when they get below 50%. All right. So I'm going to talk about some other specs here and I'm going to talk about, I'm, I'm kind of go into my overall reason as to why this is a better camera. All right. It's a better camera. My, my opinion as far as the flex, not some of the micro links or anything like that. If you're going to buy a, a new camera, one of these ones that are uh, where you don't need the carrier, this can be thrown in the trash. It really can. I'm going to continue to use it because I bought it, but it still remains all the troubleshooting problems that Spy Point has. It has not improved upon any of those problems as far as signal or sometimes it just doesn't work or it just shuts off. I do believe a lot of it has to do with batteries. And other past things, they claim that it has to do with firmware. I'm not sure that that's the issue. It is a Canadian company, but now they do offer, um, in the Spy Point Flex, it asks you, do you want to, to um, target USA towers or Canadian towers? And obviously we hit USA. But before it never had that problem. So this, this is a better camera, in my opinion. Right, and I'm going to go through some other things. So they have updated the antenna here, right? And this, it just, it just does not fit. You know, it kind of just shakes off and eventually just falls down, and it doesn't. And that could be part of the signal problem. I'm not really sure that it is, but that could be part of it. This antenna, I think it's amazing. It goes up. It's perfect. It doesn't twist around. It doesn't have to. There are times where I have forgot to put the antenna up and the camera still works perfectly. It's perfect for, I like that they, it, it's attached. There's no, there's no moving parts in it and you just put it down and it sits really good in your bag. Like when you're, when you're going out to put cameras out or whatever, it's just a boxy little thing that sits in there and nothing's going to bend or break. When you put this in your bag, Either you have to put it in in a certain way, kind of put it down like this, or take it off and put something over the cover for the most part. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It's never been a problem in the past, but now there is something better. That's just my opinion, right? This review is getting really long. As far as the screw-in holes, quarter-inch screw-in holes, some, for some reason, they took away the one on the bottom. I don't know why they did. It's, maybe it's because of how they situated the whole bottom piece here that you can't put on it obviously you know but they took away the one on the bottom the one on the bottom is the one that we use for the most part we don't use this one all the time in my opinion that's just my opinion uh moultrie they kept them they got the one there and they got the one on the back and where they situated the one on the top the one on the back it makes you want to use it more it makes sure, just for my purposes anyway, because a lot of the things that we buy, they come up and they go up and they go out like this. And then you want your camera to sit on the top like this. So if you, the, the, like I'm talking about the things that, are, that the companies sell. So I make a homemade one, but even so. So it comes out and it, it's situated up top. So for you to do that, you'd have to mount this like this. It makes no damn sense. As far as people talking about a camera and spy point just doesn't i don't think that they listen to the customers i don't think they listen to the hunters i don't think they listen to people about what they say i don't think they go on youtube and watch reviews i think they just come up spit out a new camera and say here it is buy it and uh they're making money you know what i mean because spy point pioneered cellular trail cameras they were the first ones as far as i know they were the first ones and i've been with them for a long time and this is the last spy point that i will buy because they're just not addressing anything. There are other countries out there, other countries, the other companies out there, Tacticam is another good company too. I want to do some reviews on those. Um, Moultrie just listens and they, they get better and they get better and they get better. That's what I got there. So as far as the screwing holes and as far as the antenna, they just drop the ball. And this, this clip, for the most part, I mean, it's if you're not pulling it on the, the perfect angle, it's a lot of pressure, and it, it's it's ridiculous trying to get get it out. Sometimes, sometimes you front, you, you fight with it, you know. As opposed to these downward ones, have been proven that they're just harder. They're just harder 
to take off because the pressure is different. It's more of like a like an outward pressure, right? To get it. That, that one went good. But these side ones, they've just proven to be better. They just pop right off. And Spy Point before had one of the side ones. I don't know why they changed it. You know, is it that much harder to put a side one here and have it open and open in the front? I don't know. It's sleek looking, it's hot looking, it's sexy looking. You know, but the antenna is like a floppy noodle in the wind. All right, so that's really all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed my review, my side-by-side -side review of the Spy Point Flex and the Mobile Moultrie. If you have any other questions that I did not answer, put it in the comments. I'll be prompt in answering them. Thank you very much. Sub the channel.